um, expression of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, the idea was particularly to show the impact this revolution will have. It will have a disruptive but uh, significant impact on business models, on economies, and even on society. Now, if I look back three years ago, many of the technologies which I described at that time were still considered science fiction. And today they have become some, in, to a large extent, uh, commonplace. Just think of self-driving cars, of blockchain, of artificial intelligence. Um, if I look at the paper uh, this morning, at the papers, um, there are so many articles now about the fourth industrial revolution. And I may mention the World Economic Forum yesterday just published a report looking at the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on jobs. It's a very important report. I think it's available for the media, um, showing that we can, we don't have to be pessimistic, providing, providing we take the necessary measures for reskilling and upskilling of our labor force now, and we don't wait for too long. Now, why do they all write a second book? The fourth industrial revolution is not just happening. The fourth revolution has also the potential to address and solve many issues, for example, environmental issues and so on. It can be very beneficial for humankind. But the fourth industrial revolution has also some risks. We don't want to become the slaves of robots, of uh, algorithms. No, we want to make sure that this revolution serves unima, huma, humanity. And in order to do so, we have to shape the policies around the fourth industrial revolution. We cannot wait until those effects of the fourth industrial revolution um, develop and unfold uh, in a non-controlled way. We need to create frameworks. We also create, we have to create standards in order to make sure that we still can cooperate on a global uh, level in using those um, uh, technologies. So the whole book is about how can we make sure that we work together on a global level and create the necessary policies to make the fourth re industrial revolution really beneficial for all people uh, on earth. So that's the purpose and um, you will find all the details in the book. Uh, the World Economic Forum has been associated with China since the beginning of its reform and opening up policy. I came to China the first time and we had our first event in 1979. So we are celebrating 40 years of cooperation. I have witnessed the great uh, ascension of China. Uh, it has become the number two and soon it will be the number one economic power uh, in the world. It's just uh, mind-boggling uh, what has been achieved in the last 40 years. And I'm sure, particularly with its focus on the fourth industrial revolution, uh, China will continue its growth, but it will be more growth of a qualitative nature, fortunately, and not just quantitative growth. Because China has now achieved a level of development uh, which guarantees to large parts of the population uh, the physical existence. So the key will be quality of life and the fourth industrial revolution which is highly recognized by China and its authorities will certainly help to do so. Um, of course globalization has benefited the world tremendously uh, in the last uh, decades and particularly in the last 40 years. Um, the context has changed. 
Today, a global trade is not only an exchange of physical goods. Uh, we have today, uh, we have e-commerce, uh, we have the issue which uh, you mentioned of intellectual property, we have the issue investments and I could go on and on. So economic uh, exchange has become much more difficult. Now, we have to make everything to keep a multilateral and open system. And trade wars are certainly, uh, at the end, a lose-lose and not a win-win situation. Uh, so I hope that um, uh, everybody will recognize that uh, maintaining an open multilateral system is in the interest not of every individual country, but of the world as a whole. I can I can imagine that even in the coming years, directly or indirectly, we still will uh, deal with the fourth industrial revolution. We should not forget, it's a major transformation force of the world at the present time. There is a second transformation force, which is the transition from a unipolar to a multipolar world, and I should say from a uniconceptual to a much more multiconceptual world. How do we have a differentiation with 2016? 2016 we looked particularly at the technological aspects and we tried to explain what the fourth industrial revolution is. For example, what can we expect from artificial intelligence? How will blockchain unfold? Now we are much more in, in, engaged in the realization of the fourth industrial revolution and if you look at the theme this year, uh, it's mainly uh, devoted to the, and, and the sessions to a large extent, are devoted to the impact of the fourth industrial revolution uh, on society. I could give you now, uh, since I have written the book, a long lecture, but let me just give you some examples. Uh, the World Economic Forum will have next week a a social um, impact summit uh, in uh, New York um, uh, together with the United Nations uh, General Assembly uh, week and here we have numerous examples of how uh, it's the new technologies can accelerate uh, the implementation and the realization of the SDGs Again, the World Economic Forum just published this week a report on how blockchain uh, can be helpful and I think we, we defined 50 or 60 different... Yeah, how 50, many? Diff 50 different ways. Yeah, 50 different ways how blockchain can help in the realization of the Sustainable Development Goals. This is one aspect. The second aspect is what does the fourth industrial revolution actually mean. It means connectivity. And it will allow us, those parts of countries or those parts of population which feel left out, to connect. For example, just think of the capability of a combination of distributed energy generation in Africa with solar panels and not using any more big infrastructures uh, combined with uh, 5G, uh, it provides everybody possibly with the access to education, to knowledge, to health uh, services. A third point, the fourth industrial revolution uh, can be much faster adapted compared to the previous institutions which require in order to be uh, utilized a large infrastructure, just think of the creation of a railway system and so on. Um, so um, it can help to leapfrog, uh, it can help uh, at the moment emerging countries, underdeveloped countries to leapfrog. So those are just three um, concrete examples how uh, this technology can help um, the, uh, let's say, those who feel um, left behind or feel disenchanted. 
Um, but we have to make also sure, and uh, that's another answer to your question, that we create the necessary skills to ensure that um, we have the talents which are needed in the fourth industrial revolution. Because the fourth industrial revolution will require different skills, different talents to what is now required. So the educational systems, the professional training systems have to be adapted to the needs of the fourth industrial revolution and those countries which do it fast and which foresee the need to do so will be the winners. Of course, I'm um, very um, interested of how the fourth industrial revolution will impact on the global infrastructure. Um, if we look at uh, the global, uh, at global cooperation today, um, of course, uh, we have institutions, we have mechanisms to deal with the traditional issues. Maybe sometimes not in perfect ways and sometimes even in conflictual ways. But if you look at um, the policies which are needed here, global policies to create standards for, um, uh, for the new technologies, to create ethical principles, for example, for artificial intelligence, uh, to create a cyberspace which is resilient and robust, um, to create solutions for many global problems, like the pollution of our oceans by plastics. And I could go on and on. So we have many issues which require global cooperation and which, for which we do not have yet the necessary mechanism and institutions. And the new book, and I, you are the first to hear about it, will uh, have the title Globalization 4.0. Because in order to deal with the issues of the fourth industrial revolution, we need a revitalized and to a certain extent reshaped global cooperation system. We have to be aware that um, the battle on, for leadership in the fourth industrial revolution is also, I would say, heating up uh, the trade discussions at the present moment. It's not just an issue about trade and about exports and imports, it's also a discussion of who will lead the fourth industrial revolution. Because um, the fourth industrial revolution is characterized by the fact that who moves fast and who moves first gets a very special competitive advantage for the future. So what is the, let's say, best way for China to move ahead? I think it's uh, to mobilize its entrepreneurial, its innovative forces. And um, we have here at this annual meeting, and that's very special, we have not only invited the large companies, which are the members and partners of the World Economic Forum, we have invited also the startups. And I'm very glad to say that there are 400 startups present here. They are the drivers of the fourth industrial revolution. And out of those 400, are 200 are um, uh, Chinese uh, companies or Chinese entrepreneurs. So creating the necessary innovative and entrepreneurial infrastructure, I think, is the key short term and long term it's creating the necessary educational systems. I'm convinced if we look at the previous industrial revolutions, uh, for example the transition from, from agriculture to industry and the transition from industry to service, always jobs were destroyed economists speak of creative destruction um, and this will also be the case this time but what is different is that time 
which is available for this transition um, will be much shorter than in the previous revolutions. So, mid-term and long-term, I'm optimistic that we can uh, replace the lost jobs by new jobs and I recommend you very much to read our study which we just published which gives a much more academic and scientific uh, background uh, to the answer uh, to your question um, in a very detailed form. Um, short term I think those countries which particularly and that's my message to the young generation uh, it is be as entrepreneurial as possible. So countries with a very entrepreneurial, innovation-driven um, uh, infrastructure, uh, they will be winners uh, in the age of the fossil revolution.